um, Dr. Evans, you wanted to come? Yes, well, I wanted to um, sort of clarify a few things about the bioinitiative report, um, just for the record. It was 29 independent scientists, and I think it's the independence of the scientists which is unusual. A lot of the um, other big reviews have been done by um, people with questionable links to industry. Um, there were three former presidents of the Bioelectromagnetic Society on, on the bioinitiative. There were um, the chair of the Russian National Commission, Committee on the Non-Ionising Radiation Protection and the senior advisor to the European Environmental Agency. So these aren't just a sort of a bunch of people who don't know what they're talking about. Um, I have tried to make that clear. Yes, I think, um, there's, there's a lot of talk about a prevailing um, consensus. There's, there's a lot of groups who've been calling for a precautionary approach who would disagree with that, including the Council of Europe, as we mentioned. They've done their report mm -hmm. in 2011 and resolution 1815 um, in 2011 or 12, I think, um, calling for a precautionary approach and a right to a healthy environment, especially for children and future generations. The European Environmental Agency call for as low as reasonably achievable um, <coughs> levels. The um, American Academy of Environmental Medicine specifically opposed smart meters based on the health effects that they um, can see from the literature. The Irish doctors... Strictly speaking, Dr Evans, you're no longer uh, commenting on the, the question. Well, what I'm I trying asked. to say Dr. is that he, I, I we're talking we about this prevailing that. public opinion, but actually there is, I'm saying all yeah. around the world, there are no, big I, groups, I, I, the we, Austrian Medical Association. I think we understand that. Yeah. So there's lots um, of big groups who are... Um, can I just um, ask Dr Mira? Um, much of the scientific data on electromagnetic frequencies focuses on the potential uh, harmful effects of mobile phones. Um, now, we heard from Mr. Mitchum his view about uh, the relative acuity and chronic uh, phases of this. Um, I wonder if you could comment on how you believe the uh, scientific data on uh, phones translates to smart meters? We believe that there is sufficient analogy that you can use the same sets of ICNOP guidelines. And of course, just to reiterate, calls for precautionary approach. There is a precautionary approach to use of radio waves in the UK in relation to children and mobile phones. But with smart meters, the average exposures are much lower, they're further away, they're not broadcasting as often and therefore we feel that um, similar precaution is not required. Are all children actually obeying the precautionary principle? Uh, unfortunately not. Um, uh, unfortunately what we're seeing is a 50% increase in brain tumours with children over the last 10 years. We're going to need to move on down. Uh, thank you, Jane. I'd like to move on from specifically um, the Stop Smart Meters UK, move on from your health concerns, some of your wider concerns. Um, you've said that there's been little to reassure consumers that their data will be secure or private. What do you think could be done within the programme to give greater reassurance in that regard? Um, uh, uh, unfortunately, with the nature of the programme as it's currently standing, I, I don't think there is any assurance you can provide. Um, uh, there is a, a fairly poor track record of protecting data here in the UK um, and the, 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 the nature of the current smart meter solution, as it were, uh, means that it's susceptible to hacking, um, cyber attack and so um, data loss is unavoidable with the current design. I don't think there is anything you can do to uh, assure the public. Okay, so you don't think it's something that can be mitigated against? You think it's a, a, a clear um, I, I think if you were to have um, a, a very different smart grid solution or smart metering solution, um, then it could look quite different and maybe some of the security risks could be mitigated more robustly. But, but, in, currently but in what way would it be different? For disaster. Are you talking about a wired solution rather than a wireless yeah, solution? Yeah, wired solution, there could be enclave network um, uh, usage. Uh, a more sort of uh, regional or, or local um, um, networking um, um, arrangement, uh, but the, the, the problem is that there is going to be some in incredibly sensitive data being collected about people from smart meters, and um, by, by the very definition of the fact that you are collecting that data, you are unfortunately making it vulnerable to exposure and falling into the wrong hands and being used for the wrong purposes. Okay. Um in terms of the costs of rollout, which you uh, suggested will far outweigh any savings by consumers for many years, yep. can you just elaborate on how you've calculated these costs and these savings in order to come to that conclusion? Um, a study that was submitted to another um, uh, committee um, in 2011 by Professor Ross Anderson of the University of Cambridge 
uh, he works for one of the information technology units there, um, commented um, that the, the, the project was um, potentially going to be the biggest IT project failure in history. Um, because of um, many of the um, uh, uh, many overlooked aspects, which I can't comment on, but his his, his I could uh, happily provide you with um, a copy of his document and his colleagues. They've studied it extensively. Um, energy theft is a big problem. Um, many uh, agencies, government security agencies, have, have commented about this. Um, uh, smart grid solution as it stands. The CIA's for, former director James Walsley has said this isn't a smart grid, this is a very, very stupid grid. Uh, the FBI have commented on the fact that uh, energy loss and energy theft is rising. There are gangs in Mexico that are going around reconfiguring smart meters to be able, uh, on a commission basis, to be able to provide people with lower bills. And while that might sound good to some people, unfortunately the costs are likely to be socialised through higher bills for everybody else. Um, I, I, presume, I presume that's predominantly anecdotal, but in terms of actual well, studies... Well, it's an FBI days, report, okay. so I could, again, provide well, you with a copy of that. Is it well. principally Ross Anderson's report in terms of the costs, so the costs and savings in the UK? Is it principally Ross Anderson that you're basing that? No, on? no, not at all. So we have um, massive cyber security risks. Uh, there was a report um, published um, very recently about cyber security spend that has not been earmarked in the US. I'm not sure about how much has been earmarked for cybersecurity here in the UK, but by 2020, cybersecurity for Smart Grid is expected to reach over $7 billion. Um, we have um, missed so deadlines. Speci specifically for energy Smart Grids, $7 billion. Correct. Okay. Specifically, cybersecurity for the smart meters. Um, we have the uh, likelihood that when the, health, um, um, the, the World Health Organization and the IIRC upgrade their classification from a 2B to a 2A. That's going to mean that all the smart meters in the UK are going to need to be replaced if they're wireless. Um, that cost um, probably hasn't been factored in. Um, health problems and associated downstream costs associated with treating those health issues. Sleep problems, um, you know, causing accidents for people, etc. Um, and one big issue with all of this as well is that um, a question possibly for the panel is who is picking up the liability for the smart grid and specifically for the health issues as well? Is it going to be the energy companies or is it likely to be the taxpayer? My understanding is that DEC is specifying the requirements for smart meters. That potentially then puts the, the liability for all of these health issues and any other issues in the, the lap of the government and the taxpayer. Just, just very briefly, in terms of the, the upgrading from 2B to 2A, uh, can I just ask, Dr. Mayer, do you think that's likely? At the moment, the big scientific document that underlies the 2B classification was published last <coughs> Friday, and I haven't had a chance to get through the 450 pages, but my assessment, and talking to our member of staff who is a part of that process, is that um, radio waves are currently at the bottom, the more safe end of 2B, they don't seem to be hitting up against 2A. In the future, obviously, people will have been using mobile phones for tens and twenties of years, and we could look for secular trends in some of the health effects that are alleged. So you couldn't rule it out, brain certainly. Tumors. So eventually, we, we, we shall know. But, but at the moment, I don't think it's heading for a 2A class.